Hello everyone, welcome to the show. We're uh, back at the Jewel Lake this week and uh, we're still gonna uh, do some more exploration of the of the Ethiopia Attic, the Dantonia mine. Just a fascinating mine. Now uh, there's, the, the, especially the top levels that we're gonna go to this week. Um, you know, there's, there's five levels to this mine. There's all kinds of railways, ore carts, artifacts up there. And, uh, and just fascinating uh, quartz veins, huge quartz veins. You can see some silver and stuff in them. Um, big pillars and just really amazing, uh, amazing mine to explore. Um, really enjoyed being up at Jewel Lake. Uh, so we, we go into where the lodge is there. And Jim and Shannon are, are there. They own the Jewel Lake Resort there. Just fantastic hosts. Uh, if they're, they're looking actually to sell the resort, beautiful resort, about 34 acres. There's all kinds of historic mines in the area, and you know they can kind of point them out to where you are. They really enjoy people that that enjoy history and like talking about history. Um, yeah, they want to sell the the lodge. You're asking just like just a little over a million dollars for it. Heck of a heck of a deal if someone's looking for a really nice lodge. But so anyhow, so um, we're going to kind of stick around the area for the next few weeks and check out all these other mines that uh, that Jim's uh, pointed out for us. So um, uh, I like to really thank the viewers for all the support and stuff we're getting. Uh, uh, you know, for the show, uh, for just about a thousand subscribers, and we really urge you to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the channel. And uh, you know, at, uh, I think over thirty-two thousand views or something like that. So, um, uh, thanks, uh, thanks everyone for supporting the channel, and um, we'll see you next week. And I hope you enjoyed this week's show. This here is the Jewel Lake Lodge, so kind of come a bunch of really cool little cabins here, and uh, little office here. So do some boat rentals and stuff, and just park right here by the lake, and you just walk right up there, past that little shack there, and that's where the mines are. There's a little trail I take up to the to the yacht. It's not too hard to get up there. All right, so another day, another dollar. We are going to continue along the, the left branch now. So um, the main adit from the Ethiopia shaft goes all the way in here. And uh, we explored the right branch, and now we're going to go for the left one. Oh, what is not that cool, eh? Look at it just trucking down the... I don't know how well you can see that. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, if I was going to put a scuba diving suit on and go anywhere, Maybe that'd be it, but kind of a pretty cool stoped out area. You can see they got a little, uh, oh, some writing up there. Burt Price Greenwood, BC. Huh. That was uh, written a few days ago, I'm sure. There's a great big box here. <laughs> kind of interesting, I've never seen anything like that before. Maybe something for tools, I don't know. Might have been a crate that a machine came in. It looks almost like that. <laughs> Maybe they put something on their ore carts. Or... Might have been a machine that came in on a big crate and they just brought it in like that, or maybe it had some other purpose, I don't know. Never seen anything like that before. That's why we keep exploring these mines, because we keep seeing things we haven't seen before. 
Like my wife always says, that's never happened before. <laughs> oh yeah, I can feel air now. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah, we'll definitely want to be heading up this. Looks fairly easy. I just don't like it when the ceiling's too low because with these pack with this pack it's kind of a pain. Maybe I need to get a pack on the front or something. We got the coolest hangers here, you know, I've never seen these before anywhere else. Must have had some kind of other light cable or the uh, compressor cable or something hanging up on there. Found something interesting about rats, you know, I always wondered how rats could see in the dark. And uh, a viewer asked about it. It was not kind of neat, eh? It's a copper wire. Perfect circle. So there must have been a hose attached to that. So the viewer was asking how can the rats could see in the dark, and I did a little research on it. They can't see in the dark. Uh, there's no light they can't see. Um, simply what they do, oh, that looks, looks pretty interesting. What they do is they use their whiskers to find their way around in the dark. Almost the same as uh, you know, a blind man would with a cane. Uh, something else I didn't read about, but I kind of think it may be the case. The rats are really stinky. So I'm thinking they probably kind of leave a scent trail. So uh, if they have a an area that they frequented or a path or whatever, they probably kind of piss along their way or something and use that to navigate a little bit. I'm thinking maybe that's the reason why they're so smelly. Um, I don't know, I haven't read that anywhere, but it uh, makes sense to me. So. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me why an animal would uh, leave a big scent trail because you'd think predators would have an easier time locating the prey. But that makes sense to me. I know bobcats say they, they hunt rats quite a bit, but obviously they, there's no way they could hunt them inside here if it's pitch black. So they probably have pretty good eyesight. They're probably more likely to kind of hang out um, the entrances to these adits because um, uh, Bobcat hunts at night and the rats are more active at night too. So uh, if they have a little bit of light, I'm sure they can find and locate them. I've never seen any Bobcat tracks inside of mine. I just ran into a trapper one time that was setting some traps and he says he never ever saw a, an attic where there wasn't Bobcats around that hunted the rats. Interesting things, it's kind of cool when viewers ask you questions and then it forces you to do a little research. Yeah, there, that was, um, uh, that was a uh, drill bit, rock drill bit. It's really cool when viewers ask you questions that I don't have the answers to, and then I have to do a little research, and, and I end up learning from it. A little bit of writing here and there. If I see some writing, a name or something, I'll uh, try to focus in on a little bit more. There was a viewer that, uh, I actually did a little bit of uh, research on a name through Ancestry.com. I don't know how he did it. And he found out this miner's name and how old he was and when he died and everything. It's kind of interesting. Some of the genealogy. That's a really interesting looking formation. You think, oh boy, that's... How come they stop, you wonder? Huh? They drilled some more holes there, but uh, they never blasted it. Nice quartz in here. It's always interesting when you pop out somewhere you have no idea where you are. So this is very uh, skinny trying to squeeze in here. Which is actually good news for you guys because when it's real skinny like that a lot of people don't like going in here. They'll just turn around and say, ah, oh, there's lots of other places to explore. We'll turn around and go back. So the cool thing about that is uh, if there hasn't been many more people in here, there'll be more interesting artifacts in here. Peterson. 
Another reason that I'm kind of happy to be able to get in through these skinny places is because uh, one of the main reasons I enjoy going in here is so I can document these mines because it's not going to be very many more years and it's going to be totally plugged off. So people are, unless they want to go through a lot of work to try to dig it out, they're always going to be wondering what the heck was there. So by uh, documenting these things, we can tell you. Now, we're just going to make sure we've got no false floor here. Yeah, it looks good. You see the tracks here. So this wood's really rotten. This is breaking apart on me. But since the tracks are, are still here, I don't see any reason to think I'm going to have to be swimming anytime soon. Oh, there's uh, Valance, Elcock, 1947. George Penning, 1947. Ford Lane, 46. So this is when this mine shut down in 46, 47, I think. All of a sudden they just shut her down. Lots of graffiti in here. So this may be going to be blocked off soon, so it's a good thing we got in here. Mary had a little lamb. My, you know. <laughs> so again, these are made by um, carbide lamps which were around before they had, um, you know, batteries, electric batteries and stuff. And everyone used carbide lamps at one time. I don't like them much anymore because they're kind of a pain. And uh, also, if uh, you have any flammable gas and you have an open light, well, it's not a good mixture. Oh, something else I was going to show you about my, uh, my uh, oxygen monitor here. So I'm able to test it. It works pretty good. I'll show you how it works. See, um, I'll just breathe on it a few times. There it goes. Your, uh, your oxygen you breathe out is about 15%, and this uh, sets off an alarm and it goes down to below uh, 19. So, just by breathing on it, you can test it, and it goes off, and then as soon as the air is good again, it uh, shuts up. So, really cool thing to have if you're exploring mines. Piles of graffiti in here. Some of these guys are pretty good. Now, this is kind of a bit of an unusual setup. Here we have a have a manway in the middle, and we got two ore chutes on both sides. I don't know why they would do that, but maybe it'll become apparent at the yet top. You see, I was wondering why there was two uh, ore passes, but the one ore pass here, it's just hooked right up to the chute. So from that level, it would just go directly. A little thing directly right down to the bottom without having to do anything else with it. So coming from this other direction, there's uh, there's looks like uh, well there's some tracks here. So they would have just uh, dumped ore from this area here and uh, on over here. So they probably had the the right uh, um, ore path built first. Yeah, that makes the most sense. That it had this one built first. And then they found this other stope and uh, decided that they need to put an additional one in. But So I got this really cool mine car here. I always like to see them. I mean, this guy's definitely frozen in time here. So this is a small ore cart that, um, that I kind of really like. And uh, we've seen them before. It's got a, um, a tailgate at the one end that just unclips. And then it has this uh, lever that allows it to swing sideways. And you can dump the, the ore over the, over the edge. And um, the reason it's so small is they would have just pushed this by hand. They wouldn't have had a locomotive or anything to, uh, to, to, to power this one. So, so we're going to make our way along here. We're going to explore. This is the 200 level here. It's not as the same as the 200 level that we explored in the first segment because they're not connected. Probably at the same one. That looks really neat. Really big stoked out area and there. Looks like we can get up in there. Really clean up there. But I always want to check the entire level out first before we go up. So let's do that. Looks like a really large stoked out area there though. Pretty substantial workings. And this is a kind of a pretty difficult place to get into because uh, it's almost collapsed at the very bottom and you're having to squeeze through a really tiny little spot there. Which is uh, probably actually good. 
because uh, you get into places that are easier to get to. Someone would have pushed that ore cart car down the down the Jerez or whatever. Well, we're going to drift here because so, we're following uh, some working, going back and forth. Not really seeing anything real interesting here for mineralization. There's an airline there, a compressor line, a fairly small compressor line to run the air tools, the drill. And uh, this kind of makes sense. You see these marks on the wall, but I, I think they're just keeping track of how many ore carts maybe they, uh, they hold out of here. Maybe they got paid by the cart or something. Who knows? Or they want to know how many carts they sent down. So they just do a tally system for that. You know, this is uh, much smaller than the main tunnel, this 200 level. But you know, it's still easy enough to walk on everything. Yeah. Looks pretty interesting to me. Anyways. Here's a little miner's graffiti. It says, looks like it says 25 cents. And it says, leave can here. Maybe stupid, and there's a can there. <laughs> so, of course, being curious, I'm not following directions. Is there 25 cents there somewhere? I wonder how. I wonder if there's. <laughs> it's actually almost like ice. Yeah, well, I don't see nothing there. Hmm. Okay, I almost wanted to follow the directions, so I'll leave the can here. <laughs> so here we go, we're going to go up from where this mine car is and uh, try to take the easy way here. So, uh, you see this uh, kind of a trough here, I think there would have been something called a skip car. It's a little car on wheels. Uh, maybe just ran right inside there to haul supplies like dynamite, stuff like that up here. Maybe. It's my theory. I haven't seen that before. That seems to kind of make sense. I mean, why would you want to carry cases of dynamite stuff up here? If that's the case, then it makes it likely there's not another exit up here anywhere. Well, these ladders are just a pain because you can't use them at all. As soon as you step on them, they just fall apart. So they're just really in the way. Not that you really need them, it's not very steep in here. Fair ways across here. Okay, that's the other. This is a pillar. See, this would have been left here to hold the, hold the back up. Look at that. Pretty cool uh, wall they built going up there. Oh, that's really neat. These formations look really cool. Or the carpentry work they've done here. Let's have a little peek in here. So we got almost these two parallel ore chutes. Huh, this one's cool. I've seen some pretty interesting colors on the back there. Uh, it doesn't look like it'd be very hard to get up there. Oh, that's really cool. I'm kind of a... Uh, can't decide which way you want to go. They look both look so excellent. <laughs> this is much more interesting than just walking up tunnels, eh? Oh, that might be a little slippery, though. A little hard for the camera to judge how steep these things are. Because you don't have no vertical reference. Other than if there's no material on the bare rock, you know, it's fairly steep because it rolled off or slid off. Well, I can get up there. I just stick my camera in my teeth, scramble up a few feet. It'll be fine. Interesting passage on the way down. So that's almost like a natural rock though, it's like a floor, right? It's like a foot wall, except it's a floor wall, I guess. So the ore must have just naturally ended there, and that's the, the floor. 
turned out it wasn't, it's not really that steep, it's just a matter of finding that rough rock. That's it that great if it's smooth, real smooth rock, you can't get up without sliding back, so. Especially these cork boots. They work good on a rock that's a little rougher, but not good on a rock that's smooth. So this is a pretty big stoped area, and it's really cool to see how it uh, how it's all formed. Lots of pillars in here, you can see. There's pillars all over in here, so the, um, what's under that pillars is probably the same type of material maybe they might have mined, although I don't know if they needed a pillar that big. So you can see, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four pillars from here. So this is a scaling bar that I found, and they just a bar that they would have used not to knock down. You know, it's got almost like a, a little short pry bar. They used just to, uh, to pry loose some material or whatever that's hung up in these ore chutes. And uh, there's some really cool formations. And to see these big pillars. Uh, so we're up at the 300 level now. We're standing on top, but it's kind of caved in a little bit. But it looks really neat. You see these pillars holding the back up. And so that wasn't really too terrible to get up there. Um, I've got really good balance. I, a lot of people have trouble making it up loose stuff and steep stuff, but I can, I can climb up and down without a problem. So we're going to make our way along the 300 level. See what we can find along here, but I'd really like to continue going up there. That's really pretty easy walking up there and very interesting. You see the all the work in there. And like I said, this is a pretty, uh, isn't an off, I don't think this has been an often visited portion of this mine, so there we go. Condemned to, to rust here till her very day. So that's the way the axle works. Oh yeah. Hmm. Cool, eh? I'd love to have that axle because I have an ore cart like that at home without an axle, but I also am missing the, the rest of the tipping mechanism. Oh, there's a rat nest here. Hmm. Look at the rock there. Look at the real grayish color. Now there's something in here that I should kind of watch out for. It's called uh, cadmium. There was some cadmium mined here, so I don't know what it looks like. Apparently it's kind of nasty. I should do some research on it. These are for batteries. on it. As soon as you touch it, it crumbles, eh? Mm, too bad, eh? It's a nice little box. It's very fragile. Just leave it right there. Antifreeze, yeah. Boil resistant antifreeze. Hot shot. <laughs> I wonder why they need antifreeze to mine. Maybe they use it to water the rats. <laughs> they better have cheaper ways to kill them than that. Yeah, this is the kind of mine that I like. Uh, something else I just kind of realized on these hand carts. See, there's a um, there's no uh, attachment for a train, so you can't pull it by anything. The trains have a kind of a bumper where they can uh, couple them together and this one just has a handle so um, well it's kind of a handle and a, <laughs> and a thing to hook that latch onto so you definitely wouldn't be pulling this with a locomotive it definitely would be a, just somebody would just uh, it's just a hand cart and that is a cool shot you come around that corner it almost looks like daylight eh? it's so bright pretty cool I don't know what it is That's a pretty sulfury material. I would think that would be pretty high in ore. But um, obviously they needed that to hold the back up or this. They felt this whole thing maybe, maybe going to collapse. So really sulfury material. And from the research that I've done, that's where the gold was in the sulfides. Amongst other places, I guess. 
There's another pillar, lots of pillars in here. All over. Carries on up there. I don't know how easy it'd be to get up there. Well, pretty easy to get around in here anyways. These nice big high areas. There's the other place where we saw that. We're at the bottom, we looked and we seen a really neat sort of a uh, a wall they built in there to keep the material on this side. Well, the reason is because as it gets down to the 200 level, they want it to come down the chute on this side, not to spill over the other way. Oh, look at that white material up there. Pretty big, huge band of it. I don't know if it's quartz or... Well, this is kind of a pretty cool little uh, ore pass coming down here. Big, almost looks natural. See the roof and stuff formed up out of there. So I bet you that 300 level is going to be, or the 400 level is going to be pretty impressive. Some big white chunks of quartz there that rolled down from that ore pass from the top there. There's a pretty interesting angle here, this tunnel. It goes over at a pretty good angle here. Oh, this really neat rock. Lots of timbering in here. Where all these ore passes. Now this looks like it's all falling off the back. We'll say not while the last guy was exploring in here. <laughs> Long bloody ways. And we got a row of stalls here. Oh, hey, you could go down for a long ways. Man, this is just a major level. Okay, we'll hop down into there. Rock that's peeled off the back. I don't think we're going to get very much further going this way. But most times when you just push a little bit further, you end up finding something really worthwhile. I wouldn't be surprised if we came out the 500 level where we were the other day when we ran out of batteries. We're at this uh, stoked area near the top of the mine here. And it's just fascinating here to see this white rock here. And it's just a huge area. It's really hard to show it. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Look at the big crack in there. Like I always say, I'm not really any expert, but it looks to me like this is a material that they were mining. And this is near the top of uh, the 500 level, and that's what got left behind. And I'm thinking, I don't know, the price of gold, the economics didn't work out. And maybe, just maybe, this is something that might be worth mining. Uh, it's not that far from the surface. Look at the pillars and stuff in here. Pretty neat looking pillar, you know, that gives you an idea what they mined here because they, you know, they left this pillar here to hold the back up. You can see there's a bit of copper in here. There wasn't a lot of copper mined in this, uh, in this mine. It was mostly silver and gold and a tiny bit of cadmium. Uh, so that's some lead too. But, well, what happens is they just take all this ore, stuff that assays out good or looks good, and it goes to the smelter and then they smelt it out and then they tell you what was in it and pay you for what it was, eh? So. If we wanted to, but what we're going to do is first of all, we're going to explore this. Uh, certainly, got, can't go on the smooth part. <laughs> we're going to explore this um, this level here. This is our tradition. Before we go up any further, just try to go as far as you can. And I don't really suspect this level is going to go that far. I think. maybe a narrower part of the vein or it might be caved in here on this side at least anyway yeah oh wow eh? check that out look how white that is oh look at this I think we got some silver here silver ain't worth nothing there's only a few part of an ounce there That's quartz. Oh yeah, well this is that crumbly stuff. There's some more of that silvery gold stuff. 
So that is in quartz, and that really looks like silver and gold to me, but more so than anything I've ever seen in a mine, so I'm seeing a little flux of that in the quartz here. A little bit here and there, just a couple little pockets. Bands of mineralization in the quartz. I think that's gold and silver. You know, even real thin little layers of it. Isn't that pretty the way? Beautiful white quartz in here. There's a beautiful chunk of white quartz. I'm sure that's quartz. Very white. If I was a prospector, I'd be peeling this stuff off. This is mainly a gold mine. I can't remember how many kilograms of gold this mine produced in its lifetime. Quite a bit of gold came out of here. And silver. Not much else. There's some stones here. Look how nice and clean it is in here. Uh, the bottom, the top part's clean. <laughs> the bottom part's where all the dirt went. <laughs> On the top side, you can see there's no quartz there, really. Looks like they cleaned it all up. Usually I bring my iPad, and uh, it's got internal GPS, so I can get a, a shot of my location. I pop out somewhere unexpectedly, but I forgot it today. What about pissy smell? I don't know what the hell it is. Maybe they have the tavern close to here. Huh. It continues further up. Oh, there's a bat. See them? Pretty small one. You see what kind of bat that is? So, we're almost at this exit. So, uh, yeah, we're still on top of this big stope. And we haven't yet uh, checked out this other railway here as far as we can. Might not be all that much more to check out up here, but. So there's the daylight there, and uh, we'll make our way up there. Um, thanks for joining us again, and uh, we're back out in the daylight, and we're safe, and we'll see you next week again.